Well, hey, boys and girls, it's like Where's Waldo, but instead of Waldo, we're talking about coefficients in a function. Oh, that was the worst voice ever. Uh, why did you make me use it? Uh, I can never use it again. Okay, well, let's pretend that didn't happen. We're all a little worse off. I'm pretty sure I'm going to cry myself to sleep tonight. But the point remains, people. Let's stay on task because what's going on is that we've got a function. And the function looks like ax cubed plus 2b. And we're supposed to figure out what a and b are. They're going to be fixed numbers. And we know information about f of 2. We know information about f prime of 2. And we have to use that to actually figure out what these constants a and b are equal to. So people, let's do this. It's not so bad. In fact, it's more than not so bad. It's actually really easy. So this is a great example of a problem where you may or may not know how to do it when you look at it. But there's only really one thing you could do. So here's what I mean, dudes. We know what happens when you plug in 2. And we also know what happens when you take the derivative and then plug in 2. So actually, let's just write those down. That is literally the only thing we could do. So let's go ahead and write them down and see what happens. If we plug in that x equals 2 means y equals 26, we get this equation. 26 equals a times 2 cubed plus 2b. And we can even simplify that. 26 equals 2 cubed is 8. So this is 8a plus 2b. And that may not give us a solution yet, but it certainly helps. It looks a little bit better than the vague crap we had before. All right, that's cool. And now let's write down the fact that f prime of 2 equals 60. The first thing we got to do is actually compute f prime of 2. So check it, dogs. Uh, we want to take the derivative of this puppy. And let's be a little bit careful about it. So I'm going to rewrite it here. We've got ax cubed plus 2b, and we want to take the derivative. Well, when you do this, remember that a and b are constants. They're fixed numbers. There are no x's in them. And that completely changes how you're going to do the derivative, just in an easy way. So for example, 2b is a fixed number. It's just as fixed of a number as 7 or negative 8 or whatever. And that means the derivative of 2b is just going to be 0. And that feels kind of like a trick question. You know, it almost feels like the derivative of 2b should be 2. Not the case. 2b is a constant, and the derivative of any constant is always 0. All right, and now how about ax cubed? Well, x cubed by itself becomes 3x squared. And then, just like if a were the number 10, you have to remember to multiply your a back in when you're done. And that means our derivative is this. 3ax squared. I just switched around the 3 and the a, but that's no big deal. And plus 0 is just plus 0. So that's our derivative, people, and it's no big deal. Uh, as long as you remember that a and b are constants, it works out nicely. All right, now that's the derivative function, but we know a little bit more than just the random derivative. We know that if you plug in 2 into the derivative, you should get out 60. So let's write that out. You should get out 60 if you plug in 2. And so we can fill that in. 2 squared is 4. Uh, so we've got 3 times a times 4. That should be 60. Meh, 60. And 3 times 4 is 12. And dudes, check this out. This enables us to solve for a. It's super easy. I'm just going to divide both sides by 12. And 60 divided by 12 is 5. So what we found is that a equals 5. And remember, dudes, I did not do anything fancy or anything that you couldn't have thought of on your own. All I did was look at this thing right here that said f prime of 2 equals 60 and say, OK, that means I can take the derivative, plug in 2, set it equal to 60, and then if I'm able to solve, I can solve and good for me. In other words, I took the information they gave me and I just wrote down what it means. No big deal. You guys could totally do the same. All right, so we get a equals 5, and now let's go back up here where we had something that was seemingly useful, but we couldn't make heads or tails of it at the time. If we go back up here and we plug in 5 for a, we can totally solve for b. Check it. 8a becomes 8 times 5. 8 times 5 is 40. Um, let's move off to the right. And so here's what we get. Uh, subtract 40 on both sides, and you get negative 14 equals 2b. And divide by 2, and you get negative 7 equals b. So dudes, not so bad. Um, the derivative was the one that came through and gave us one of the values right away. We go back and we plug that into the other piece of information we knew, and that lets us solve for the other thing, which is b. So 
b equals negative 7. And we already knew that a was equal to 5. And so between the two of these, if we want to, we can go back over here and actually write down the final function. The original function was ax cubed, and that becomes 5x cubed. And then we had a uh, plus 2b, and now that means plus 2 times negative 7. So we could simplify the whole thing to be 5x cubed minus 14. Not so bad, dudes. Uh, I'm leaving now. Bye.